You mentioned your straight talking. Is that a problem? I mean, let's talk about maternity pay briefly. Mm, okay. Briefly. In the past 24 hours, you've had to issue a tweet, a video, an interview, interview with Sky News to explain what you meant on Times Radio. That's a, that's a busy day, isn't it? When you weren't meant to talk about maternity pay hours after that interview on Times Radio. And all the critics are going to be hearing is you're a Tory who wants to cut maternity pay. Mm. Are you? Hello folks, welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel. We're going to jump into a different topic today, UK politics rather than sports. The art of deception and the future of our country, Great Britain, UK. I sat down recently listening to some of the latest political news in the UK and I couldn't believe what I was hearing and seeing. Nobody is telling us the truth. It's almost as if we're in a game where every politician is playing a role. Their smiles are rehearsed. The words are carefully selected. They're obsessed with one thing, power. Power and line in their pockets. And if you watch closely, you'll notice they are not in it to serve us, no. They really need to push their own agendas. Some enter politics for reasons that have nothing to do with the people. They've become masters of spinning stories and twisting words to win our trust. But if you listen and watch their expression, something doesn't add up. Something is not real. Think about it. They spend hours practicing how to manipulate every single detail, how to say just enough to sound convincing, just like Labour telling us one thing to get votes and then doing the opposite when they get in power. They're not trying to inform us, they're trying to control us. It's all a game of deception. Take Kemi Badenoch, whatever her name is. Just recently, she praised Israel's use of Asia bombs. Let's start with our first leadership candidate, the Shadow Housing and Community Secretary, Kemi Badenoch. Um, Ms Badenoch, if you were leader of the Conservative Party this morning and a potential Prime Minister, what would you be saying to our allies, particularly the Israelis? I would be congratulating uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu. I think what they did was extraordinary. Israel is showing that it has moral clarity in dealing with its enemies and the enemies of the West as well. Hezbollah is a terrorist organization, and I think that being able to remove the leader of Hezbollah as they did will create more peace in the Middle East. Does that mean that you are ready to give the Israelis a free pass? Pager bombs, uh, airstrikes, all of the rest of it? Uh, it's not about a free pass, but Israel does have a right to defend itself. It is a small country surrounded by a lot of people who don't like it. Many of them have fled from those countries. Many Jewish people have fled from neighboring countries. Israel is their safe haven. You bear some responsibility. I mean, and I'm complimenting you here that your capacity to uh, attract public attention is pretty much unrivaled. Um, you, you said this morning uh, in The Telegraph something which I think is going to attract some attention. I'm sure uh, it will. <laughs> yeah. Well, indeed, you talked about... It's just about immigration. And what you talk about is not the numbers, but the nature of immigration and immigrants. And you say, I am struck, for example, by the number of recent immigrants of the UK who hate Israel. Mm. That sentiment has no place here. Um, which immigrants are we talking about? Well people who come from countries where Israel is seen as an enemy. I remember growing up in Nigeria as a young child that people talked about Israel with a lot of positivity. What I didn't know is that in the northern part of the country, which was heavily Muslim, people spoke in a completely different way. And I will also remember 10 years ago when 300 girls were stolen from school and taken away by Islamist uh, terrorists. It resonates with what happened on October 7th. And so I'm always shocked by the number of people who are unable to sympathize with those victims, people who were ripping down posters. I think that's extraordinary. Missing children's posters being ripped down because people hate the country. I don't think that has any place here. It's interesting. Uh, you know, you make a virtue of your plain speaking and so on. But you evidently mean, when you say uh, the number of recent immigrants who hate Israel, you mm. evidently mean Muslim immigrants. Why didn't you just say that? Because it's not all Muslim immigrants. And this is what I don't do. I'm very careful when I speak. I've met many Muslim people who love Israel. 
I met them in the Middle East. When I went to Saudi, when I went to the UAE, you know, you look at the Abraham Accords, there are many people in the Middle East who want to support Israel. Devices that make mobile phones explode or pages. She said it was clever, genius. Clever, genius. What about the innocent people who died? What about the children who were caught in the blast? Why would she defend Israel's tactic that killed civilians, innocent kids, innocent women? How can anyone justify that? Or is she saying this so that she can get a donation from a rich multimillionaire Jewish person to come and back her uh, what she wants to be, leader of the Conservative Party? And then she changes the topic and starts talking about cutting maternity pay. You mentioned your straight talking. Is that a problem? I mean, let's talk about maternity pay briefly. Okay. Briefly. In the past 24 hours, you've had to issue a tweet, a video, an interview, interview with Sky News to explain what you meant on Times Radio. That's a, that's a busy day, isn't it? When you weren't meant to talk about maternity pay hours after that interview on Times Radio. And all the critics are going to be hearing is you're a Tory who wants to cut maternity pay. Mm. Are you? Hold on. Doesn't she have three kids of her own? So why is she pushing a policy that makes it harder for families to raise children? It's a hypocrisy. She's had her kids, and now she wants everyone else to fend for themselves. One moment, she's praising Israel, killing kids. Like I said, she's probably hoping that there's some Jewish multimillionaire will see what she's saying and come and back her. And then next, she's making life tougher for families here in the UK. Has she got something against couples having children? Why? Why is she talking rubbish? Why is she against growing population? Why not encourage the country to grow from its own population rather than letting Britain get populated by illegal immigrants? It seems this country will no longer be Britain in a few years' time. It will be cosmopolitan and run by foreigners. It will be the end of Britain as we know it. We will have foreign flags and foreign flag on Buckingham Palace. King Charles better watch out. He will get evicted and put in a council flat. It's coming. It will happen. And what Kemi is saying or wants to do, what kind of a logic is that? And another thing about her, she doubled back in what she said. After she got caught out in what she really said and meant. Guess what? Next day, after realizing she got caught in what she said, she tried to get out of it. Mm. Are you? No, I think maternity pay is quite important. And this was actually a long discussion we were having about the role of the state in deciding what uh, businesses should do. But let's take a step back. Who remembers the phrase, there is no such thing as society? Yeah, everybody remembers. Mrs. Thatcher gave an interview to Woman's Own magazine where she was asked the question. And she said, there's no such thing as a, a society. She was talking about people wanting government hands out, that there are only individual people and families. And that very good explanation got cut down into a soundbite that was used to attack her. When you are a leader, when you are a conservative, when you are making the argument for conservative principles, your opponents are going to try and turn it into something else. We need to decide who's going to be leader of the party, not the left, not the Guardian, not the BBC, just conservatives. So, I mean, you, you did say it's excessive. You, were t you said maternity pay varies depending on who you work for. And you said it was, it's excessive. I was answering a different question. I was interrupted as I was answering a different question. Right. And um, I don't actually think Kate McCann was trying to catch me out. I was trying to explain yeah. that when we start talking about micro policy, we forget the first principles. Businesses, and I'm, I'll use an example. There's a cafe uh, in my constituency that closed down. And the lady who owned it said, I can't afford to pay the wages anymore. I can't afford minimum wage. I can't afford for my staff to go on maternity. We are overburdening businesses. We are overburdening them with regulation, with tax. People aren't starting businesses anymore because they're too scared. The point I'm making is that if we lighten the burden on business, they will be able to help solve these problems rather than what Kate was asking me, should the government increase it? Should the government do yes. this or that? There is too much government already. Things aren't getting any better. Maybe we should try something else. And people say you're quite blunt speaking privately, you know, you're brittle, it can be a bit, bit loose temper, you're temper easily. Is that unfair characterization of you? Can you give me an example of when that's ever happened? It's just, it's just people telling me stuff. I mean, yes. 
people, of course people will tell you stuff. People who don't want me to win the leadership okay. are telling you these things. Okay. This is politics. <laughs> Is there a stop chemi campaign like by other? You've, you've gone towards that in some of the interviews, haven't you? There's always, there's always a stop someone campaign. There will be a stop Tom campaign, there will be a stop James campaign, there will be a stop Rob campaign, and of course, there will be a stop chemi campaign. But you, as you can see, they are not stopping me. What a liar. Had time to think and try and change what she said. But it is what really is worrying me. It's not just her, it's the bigger trend. More and more, We've seen politicians who don't represent what it means to be British. It's not about where they're from. It's about where their loyalties and values lie. It's like the very fabric of UK politics is being ripped apart. We're starting to see leaders who may have a British passport, but who don't understand British values. They're more interested in pushing global agendas or serving themselves than they are in representing you and me. We're losing touch with what makes this country strong and united. And if we don't pay attention, we'll end up with a government run by people who don't really care about this country's future. It's a scary thought, isn't it? Imagine a future where our politics is controlled by politicians who have no real connection to what being British even means. And it's happening right now. Look around, see what's going on. Look at parliament. We have leaders who are out of touch, leaders who can go on TV, say things that makes no sense. and yet. No one calls them out. Why? Because they've been perfecting the art of selling lies wrapped in just enough truth. So where does that leave us? We're at a crossroads, I believe. We can either keep letting these people take control or we can demand more from our leaders. We deserve politicians who don't just act like they belong here, but who actually care about the future of the UK. We need leaders who stand for British values, who are dedicated to the prosperity and unity of the United Kingdom. Because if we don't start seeing past the rehearsed lines, if we don't stop accepting these performances, we risk losing everything that makes this country what it is. Once that happens, it's going to be very hard to get back. So next time when you listen to a politician, look at where they come from, which country they come from, read between the lines, look at how they speak, look at their math movement, the divvy smile and face expression, and you make a judgment.